In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the RGB dither template I created for After Effects. This template basically is a ready-made animation set up for you to drag and drop images in or add your own text to take something like this and generate an output like this. So I'm just going to show you how to do that with the template in this video. Before I get into the video, I will say that this is not using an actual dithering algorithm to create the dither effect. If you want to learn more about dithering specifically, I've covered dithering in some older videos on the channel and I'm going to do some more soon, um, but I'll link the ones I've already done below. To get started, once you've got the template, the first thing you'll have is this zip file. Keep a copy of this so you have a blank version of the template backed up if you need it, but unzip it for now, wherever you want, take it out of your downloads folder. And once you've unzipped, you're going to have this folder, which is just that After Effects project file that's been zipped up. So unzip that again. And in here you can see you've got the AEP file, which is After Effects project file. And you've also got this footage folder. The only thing you need to do for this to work is make sure that this texture in the footage folder doesn't have its file path changed. So don't change the name of this texture, don't move it, don't change the name of this folder, and don't change the name of this folder and it, it'll work fine. Just keep the texture where it is basically. Other than that, it should all work fine. I'm gonna show you what'll happen if it breaks though, so don't worry. So I'm just gonna rename the footage folder to test, just to show you what'll happen if you do break it. So I'm gonna open up the AEP file now. And if you ignore how bad this looks, if you look on the left, it's missing this RGB dither texture. So if you double click on that, navigate to wherever you saved the zip file from my site, look for whatever you've broke with the footage folder. So obviously I just renamed mine to say test, and then I'm just gonna show it where that texture is now and click import, and it'll then fix the setup. If you did it correctly, this is what you'll see when opening it. But if you did break it, then that's how you fix it. So if you're new to After Effects, the first place to look here is the bottom at your timeline. You can see here's a few tabs. So you've got the output tab, the setup tab, the image input tab, and the text input tab. If you don't see these, they're just in the project tab here on the left. And if you don't see that, just go to window and make sure project down here is ticked and that'll bring this little window up here. And you can just look in the comps folder and double click on any of these to open the tab up. So if I double click on setup now, it'll take me to this one. If I double click on text input, it'll take me here. So in the text input comp, this is just a normal text layer. So you can delete this one because I've made an empty text layer for you, or you can just edit this to say whatever you want, change the font or anything like that. So, so if I just change it to say whatever and just align that to the center, then go back to output and it will render the text just saying whatever. You can then obviously go through on the timeline and customize all these effects. So there's a contrast adjustment, another threshold control here, and you can edit all of these in the effect controls. Again, if you're not seeing effect controls, just go to window and make sure you have effect controls ticked down here. Obviously there's tons to like experiment with here. I'm not gonna cover like every little edit you can make because there's quite a lot, but to get the text layer working, it is really as simple as that. So you can just type whatever you want go back to output and it will render it. If you go into the setup tab, you can change things like the fractal noise texture. That's what's creating like a little bit of animation and movement in the effect. I don't quite, um, I'm not sure if it'll render out enough footage for me in this video, but if I click around, you'll see the ditherings kind of like jumping around. So if you want to adjust that, you can change the fractal type, the noise type, um, the contrast, the brightness, all that stuff. If you want to change like the graininess, the grainy effect that's going on. You can come to the dither slash snowfall preset adjustment layer and you can reduce the flake count. So if I turn that all the way down, you'll see like it becomes very, very simple. I was gonna just isolate the, the flake count slider to like its own thing, but um, you can maybe do some more stuff in here with the other controls for the snowfall effect. So I haven't messed with those just yet, like things like spread or wiggle or anything, because I was just wanting the dots from the snowfall. But yeah, just mess with the flakes and the size to get like a pattern that works for whatever it is you're making, and it will sync up the changes to the output. So you'll also notice in the setup tab, we've got the text input layer turned on right now, and the image one is turned off. So if I turn the image one on now, 
and go into the image input, you'll see there's this um, demo image, which is from Unsplash by a photographer, or I think this is a 3D render to be honest, but yeah, it's by someone on Unsplash called Alex Schuper. I will leave a link to that image if you wanna go check out that guy's work. But pulling up the timeline, in here you can drag any image you like. So I'm gonna drag in this one of a tiger, which is also from Unsplash. And just to prove how well this works, I'm not gonna make any changes to it yet. I'm just gonna go into setup, You'll see it's applied the grain to the image. And then if we go straight into output, this is the effect you get. Now, not every image is going to work as well as that because some images are not as like clear. The teeth are really clear in this image. This image just happens to work really well for what we're going for here. But there are controls in the setup tab that I'm going to show you now that will allow you to customize where the dots are and just get a little bit more control over the effect. Coming into the setup tab, you'll notice on the image layer, it says blending mask control. So what you can do is use this threshold control here to set a limit on how bright pixels have to be in this image in order to appear in the dithered output. So put simply, basically, adjust this slider and if it is appearing in the grain, it'll appear in the output. Obviously that's gone too far. So if we pull it in a little bit more, you can get something a bit clearer again. I pull in another image now. So this is a, an image of an eagle. I've used this in another video recently, but it's just one I've got sitting around and just scale it to where I need it to be, like something like that. Going to set up for this one, readjust the threshold a little bit so there's more detail and then look at the output. Let's say maybe this section here I'm not happy with and we're wanting some more of the detail from the feathers to come through. You can try and get that using the threshold that I showed you before, but if you want some more precise controls, if you come back into the image input and just make sure the images you're putting in are below these contrast and black and white layers, you can use this curves adjustment as well as this black and white here to get a little bit more control before it hits this threshold layer. So if I see what the output looks like now on this one, you'll see there is a little bit more detail here. It probably needs a little bit more tweaking. So all these like contrast and the different sliders you got for each tone for the black and white can all be used to help you determine what gets dithered and what doesn't. Obviously, like I said before, it's not a dithering algorithm. It's just using some blend modes and stuff to determine what gets dithered in this in this effect basically but yeah you can mess with these until you are happy with your output and then you can continue messing down here with these effects like there's more sort of customization here if you edit the pixelate layer it's a little bit difficult because i'm trying to like zoom in as much as i can to to show you what's actually going on but then i my effect controls aren't as easy when i zoom in um so hopefully this is coming across well on the video but this video is mostly just to help people if you did get the template just to help you work out how it works. So if I go back to my tiger image now, just redo the threshold a little bit, let's get it how it was before and just reset these controls I edited. So from here, if you're happy with what you've got and you wanna render this out, either just as an image or as an animation, just come up to composition and to get it as just an image, go to save frame as file. As you can see here, there's some like test ones I've done today. You can save it wherever you like. And then just make sure when you press save, come into your render queue. And it's not for me because I'm not going to be saving this frame. But this little render button here will appear and you can click on that and it will render out the frame you've selected. If you want to render out the full animation, um, I'll see if it's rendered for me just yet. Yeah, it's rendered this little section here. So as you can see, like the dithered dots sort of dance around a little bit. If you wanted to render that out, you can go to add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue and then set up your render there. If you're using like an older computer or if for whatever reason, After Effects is like notoriously badly optimized. If it's not letting you make changes quickly or if it's taking a few seconds every time you make a change to render, you can down here at the bottom of your composition, just change from full to half or third or even quarter and it will just lower the resolution of the preview so look, if i go to quarter it looks bad but it's still quite accurate so if i change to quarter it will render everything at quarter resolution and so if i was on an older computer that'll be faster than rendering it at full resolution um but yeah other than the details i've covered in this video this is just a default after effects project so there are no plugins Anything else that you usually do in After Effects will work with this project file. For this video, I don't even know if I'll, I don't know if I'll even list this video on the channel or if I'll just leave it unlisted, but comments will be off because if you have any problems with this template, I need you to send me an email. All the information about how to do that will be included in your download. And the good news is if you've got this template, 
any future updates that I do to this template will be sent to you for free as well. And my tiger thing's finally rendered, so I'll just uh, fit that to 100 and play it. So you can see like the little dots that dance around and stuff. But yeah, if you got the template, thank you very much for supporting. If there's an update you'd like to request to this template or an issue you've got with it, as I said, send me an email. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.